It's the third Wednesday of the month. That means it's health talk. And today we have our own Kristen Miller, who comes very often. And she is the uh, owner and founder of Mid-South Aging Consultants. She helps people navigate uh, the aging process, especially when someone needs health care or is moving from their home or into a community. She also is the founder of the 501C, right? Uh, it's Memory now Makers of the Mem Mid-South. Mem Mem Memory Makers of the Mid-South and uh, hosts four different locations right now, mm -hmm. correct? So she's welcoming those with dementia or Alzheimer's memory yeah. cognition issues to come on a monthly basis and interact and have projects to work on. Uh, so I want to welcome uh, Krista Miller to talk about how do our senses, uh, how are they affected as we age? Yeah. Reporting in progress. Yeah, it's good to see y'all again. If you haven't seen me in a while, it's because I've kind of had my hands full between my business and then starting a nonprofit, so I'm wearing a lot of hats right now. Um, so we're going to talk about something that kind of gets overlooked um, when we talk about the aging process. And so I've got a PowerPoint, and uh, I kind of surprised Joe with it today. So. <laughs> I'll get you. <laughs> um, so we're going to talk about what's normal for aging and what's not normal for aging in terms of our five senses. Normally I spend a, about an hour on this presentation. I'm not going to take a, an hour for you guys. So we're going to kind of hit the highlights. Yeah, so this is me, I'm Kristen. Um, I own Mid-South Aging Consultant and I navigate people through all kinds of complex issues related to aging. And uh, I've been around, I got credentials. <laughs> <laughs> we can move on ahead. Certified demented. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet, but you know, <laughs> it's contagious. <I> <laughs> our touch, and our sense of smell. So these are the things that we're going to hit on today. What is dentition? Dentition, our teeth. Oh. Next. Does it not, not go? Okay. It's not biting me here. Yeah. So <coughs> we know that some physiological changes happen to our eyesight. Feedback about that. Uh, we know that as we age, our eyes need 40% more light in order to see clearly. I'm in my 40s. I'm already experiencing that. Um, so that's, if you've noticed, you just can't quite see as well. Switch to brighter bulbs, extra night lights, because you're going to need that extra light as you age. That's totally normal. Uh, sometimes problems with a glare, that's normal because there's physiological changes that happen with the eye. And so you might need things that reduce a glare, like uh, they have glare, anti-glare coatings for glasses and things like that. Okay, keep going. Yeah. Changes in uh, your perception of color. Sometimes colors don't look as sharp or as distinctive as they used to when you were younger. These are just normal things that happen with aging. Okay, next. that are not normal for aging. If you have fluctuating vision, um, floaters, cataracts, glaucoma, your age puts you at a higher risk category for developing these problems, but they are not a normal part of aging. Maybe being a little bit less um, acute in your vision, normal, but things like this, seeing distorted images. If you see, look at something that you know is a straight line and it's wavy, seeing a lot of floaters, having reduced peripheral vision, these are not normal for aging. You need to see your eye doctor because it can definitely affect your safety and your quality of life. Because if you're not seeing well, 
then you're going to have a higher risk of falling. And then falls can be catastrophic. Next. So we're, we're zipping right on through. Um, so here's some things that you can do to cope with your vision changes. So you want to make sure that you're getting your regular eye exams um, to kind of monitor for those changes. Switching to brighter bulbs, extra lamps, extra night lights, especially in hallways and bathrooms. Um, Anti-reflective coatings. Um, they now have blue light glasses. My oldest son's only 17 and he asked for a pair of blue light glasses because he has to spend so much time in front of a screen. Just yeah. a quick comment. Um, a lot of our peers have had cataract surgery and, and our friend admitted that he could no longer discern when he got to a stoplight. He, he could not tell the colors he had to. He knew that if this light is brighter, then it stopped. But that's how bad it can get. That's pretty dangerous. Yes. Go to your eye doctor. <laughs> um, you can use higher contrast when you're writing things down. So if just if a normal pen is hard for you to see, switch to a Sharpie or a marker so that you have a thicker, darker line. Um, switch into larger print books, audio books. Um, use your GPS to help when you're driving. That's what that's what I do because A, I have no sense of direction, but B, I have the astigmatism and I can't read the street signs until I'm right up on it. So my GPS tells me I have to turn in 250 feet, so I'm just going to, yep, okay, that's the right street. Um, and also, speaking in contrast, if you have steps um, that are all the same material, you can use a strip of bright colored duct tape on the end of that step and that can help you create a visual distinction from one step to the other so that it prevents you from falling down the stairs. Okay, next. So what happens to our hearing? Eh? Eh? <laughs> so there are changes to the way you hear um, that is a natural part of aging. Um, sometimes you might notice a reduced sensitivity with men you tend to lose the higher pitches, which is why the men say, well, I didn't hear you say that because women tend to speak with a higher pitch. Can we women, use that excuse? Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> hey, a good one. However, I heard it. <laughs> however, women tend to lose the lower pitches <laughs> so that we can't hear each other. <laughs> um, sometimes uh, being um, less able to filter out background noise, that's a normal part of aging. And, yeah, but age 50, you might have trouble hearing noise above 15 kilohertz. And uh, average top volume is closer to about 11.2 kilohertz. So we just kind of lose some sensitivity in our hearing as we age. Sometimes that's from being around loud noises. Sometimes it's just, you know, the physiological changes that happen in hearing. So some things that are not normal <coughs> hearing. So sensory, uh, sensory, sensory, sensory neural, that's a hard word <coughs> to get out sometimes, is caused by damage to the structures of your inner ear and your auditory nerve. Uh, so this is, accounts for most of the hearing loss in adults. So being around loud noises, loud machinery, concerts, you know, things like that. Uh, sometimes genetic factors, but what it does is that you can have trouble hearing sounds, especially when there's background noise, uh, difficulty understanding children and female voices because it's a higher pitch. Uh, it can also cause dizziness and balance uh, problems. S sometimes uh, things sound muffled, so it might be hard to carry on conversations. And so now we're, we're kind of looking at, if you're having these problems, now we're looking at safety and quality of life issues. Because if you can't hear high-pitched noises, things like ambulances, police sirens, things that tell you, hey, you need to move out of the way or there's danger, um, dizziness and balance can cause you to fall, um, be, not being able to 
carry on conversations because you can't understand what people are saying can lead to um, isolation and withdrawal. And we also know that problems with hearing are also directly correlated to cognition problems. So uh, there's one more slide on this hearing on the not normal changes. So there's also conductive hearing loss. I'm gonna go back. Yeah, go back one. And um, conductive hearing loss occurs when the sound can't physically pass through, and that's usually because you've got um, stuff in your ear, fluid, earwax, foreign objects. I don't know how they got in there. <laughs> <laughs> um, sometimes tumors. Um, so it can make things sound muffled. These are things that are usually uh, reversible more so than the um, sensory neural hearing loss. But again, these can also cause safety and quality of life issues. There we go. Uh, so you always want to make sure that you're hear getting your hearing checked. And, you know, a lot of people avoid it because they're like, well, I don't have any problems with my hearing. I'm like, well, your volume on your TV is all the way up. <laughs> That's a problem. It's a problem for me. And, um, but it doesn't, it's not an old person thing. You're not going to be walking around with these giant hearing aids or something like that. But you need to get your hearing checked, especially because it can have a tremendous impact on your cognition. And that is one of the lifestyle factors that might lead to dementia that can be changed early on. Um, so you might need sound amplifiers or a hearing aid, and now they make them teeny tiny, you can't even see them. Um, if you have trouble hearing higher pitches, uh, use a smoke detector or carbon monoxide detectors that flash and have a bed vibrator. They make these for people that are deaf, because if you're deaf, you obviously can't hear smoke, smoke alarm going off, so it has a bed vibrator wakes you up. If you're out doing yard work or you know you're going to be around loud noises, wear some hearing protection. My dad, we finally talked him into getting some hearing aids because he worked around loud machinery his whole life. What did he do with his hearing aids? He wore them while he was mowing the yard and then they fell out and he ran over with the lawnmower. <laughs> I said, you don't need to hear the lawnmower. <laughs> it's already loud. Um, there's also some medications that could cause hearing loss as a side effect, so you might want to talk to your pharmacist if you've noticed trouble hearing. <clears throat> you could also switch to a captel phone, yeah. closed captioning TV to make things easier to understand so that you don't have the volume sky high. And then you can also, on your cell phone, you can make it vibrate for incoming calls and texts, so that way you say, well, I didn't hear the phone ring. Well, it's, you can feel it vibrate in your pocket. I have it on both. I know a lady who has hearing aids, and two things she did, she, she can Bluetooth, she can hear beautifully on the phone. In fact, there's times in the same room people call her so she can hear what they're saying. And also, it's hooked into her television. The TV is silent, but she's hearing a very clear signal. Yeah, are, you, are you talking about um, the lady from the shred shop? Um, no, oh, this woman's right. older oh. and retired. Okay, well, if you know, what is her name? The Brenda. Shop? Brenda. I was trying to call her Barbara. Yeah. It wasn't it. Brenda, yeah. Um, Brenda uses something like that because she has some hearing loss. You okay. know, oh, the, the other thing is the uh, telephone that you were talking about out here is actually free. Yeah. You can get that set up free, paid for by uh, the government. The government. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah telephones are free. Good. Okay, so what happens to our mouth? So we know that our tooth enamel tends to wear away and they can become more vulnerable to damage and decay. So we have to make sure that we're, you know, taking good care of our teeth. Um, tooth loss is a major reason why some older adults don't have proper nutrition because they can't chew. And so they're only eating things that they can chew. And so a lot of those things might not be the healthiest options. Um, also, the portion of the jawbone that holds these teeth in place, it kind of gradually recedes and it doesn't maintain its previous height. 
So when we say long in the tooth to describe an old person, that, that's where that expression comes from. It's not that the tooth gets higher, it's that the bone gets lower and exposes more of the tooth. Uh, sometimes your gums might get thinner, begin to recede, you might have some sensitivity. Um, sometimes your taste sensation may diminish because we actually lose taste buds when we age. That's just a normal part of aging. And so things might start to taste kind of bland. Um, and it says sensitivity to the five tastes, which are sweet, salty, sour, bitter, and umami. And umami is a weird kind of word that describes the taste of MSG. Um, we didn't have that one when I was in school learning about this. Um, but it, it starts to decline after the age of 60. So if you notice things just don't taste as good as they used to, it's probably just a normal part of aging. And there's also some drugs that, um, that are used to treat high blood pressure and high cholesterol, depression. Sometimes these can cause dry mouth, or some, there are some medications that can cause a metallic taste in your mouth and cause things to taste differently. So some things that are not normal, um, infections in your nose, mouth, or sinuses that can cause you to not be able to taste, gum disease, mouth cancer, chronic liver or kidney disease. Mm. That's something people might not know that can cause um, a lot of problems with the way that you taste and the way that you eat. <coughs> Periodontal disease is actually pretty serious. So it's not just cavity, it's, we're talking about abscesses in the teeth and infections in the teeth. And the reason why this is such a, a problem is because those infections can easily make it into the bloodstream. It can cause uh, periocarditis. It can go into your brain. And I, I have, I'm going to tell this real quick story. I had a client in uh, memory care. The reason why he was in memory care, because he had had an abscess tooth. The infection got into his bloodstream. It went to his brain. It caused an abscess in his brain, which happened to be near the memory centers in his brain, he had to have brain surgery to go in and clear out that abscess. And the, of course they had to take the damaged tissue and it severely affected his memory to the point where he had to live in memory care 24 seven. Mm. Didn't even remember half the time that he was married. So it's very, very important to take care of your teeth as you age. Um, so you uh, definitely need to and it can also lead to other things too. And in people that have certain conditions like diabetes or, and AIDS, um, there are things that can make you more likely to have periodontal disease. Next. Is that why you see people like that, that, that their teeth can decay looking, they always look like they, you know, they had beautiful teeth at one time and then and now they look like they've been eating licorice or something. Yeah, yeah, and you definitely, that's not a quality of life if you want to have to live on pureed foods. Um, so you definitely want to keep up with your dental cleanings, your checkups. Um, I had a cleaning a couple months ago and they said I need a crown and so now I'm maybe looking at the dental college where it's a little cheaper to get that crown. Um, if you have your dentures, you want to make sure that you clean them every day. And a lot of people say, well, I've got dentures, I don't need to go to the dentist anymore. Well, your, like I said, your jawbone recedes, your gums recede as you age, and you may notice over time that your dentures don't fit as well as they used to. And if your dentures don't fit well, you're not gonna be able to chew very well, or you're gonna talk and they're gonna fall out of your mouth, and it's kind of embarrassing. Um, <clears throat> and you also wanna make sure that your dental work fits properly, because if it doesn't, it can cause uh, sores in your mouth that can get infected. Um, so if things don't taste as good as they used to, instead of adding more salt, which can lead to blood pressure problems, try adding more herbs and spices. Um, you can also talk to your pharmacist about drugs that can affect your taste in your mouth. If you have dry mouth, Use a hydrating mouthwash. Biotin makes a whole range of products, mouthwash, gum, to keep your mouth hydrated. Because if your mouth is too dry, 
It can also cause sores and problems with your teeth and infections. And then just sip fluids during the day. It's good for you anyway to stay hydrated. That's a whole nother uh, section on hydration in older adults. Um, so now we're going to move on to our sense of smell. After the age of 50, your sense of smell slowly ebbs as the nerves responsible for smell begin to deteriorate. So sometimes that might be okay, you know, nobody wants to smell a smelly trash can or, you know, doggy doo doo in the yard. Uh, but your nose also produces less mucus, and that means that odors don't stay in the nose long enough for your nerves to perceive it and then um, be processed by the brain as to what that smell is. Um, but you need to be aware of odors that are around you for safety reasons, like gas leaks, um, spoiled food, because you definitely you know, you can't remember how many days those leftovers have been in there, or you can't remember how long that milk has been in there, and then you, you ingest it and then you get sick. Um, and smell is also very closely related to your sense of taste. So if you lose your sense of smell, you often lose your sense of taste. Did anybody lose their sense of smell during when you had COVID? Um, I had a sinus infection back in the spring and I lost my sense of smell and it was the weirdest thing ever. And I also lost my sense of taste because I couldn't smell anything and everything just was bland, you know. Um, so <coughs> sometimes a short term loss of smell would be like a cold or flu or a sinus infection, uh, COVID, allergies. Sometimes you get a polyp in your nose. It, uh, kind of gives you a runny nose all the time. Uh, sometimes medications like antibiotics and blood pressure meds can affect your uh, sense of smell. Uh, if you're going through cancer treatments, sometimes radiation and chemo can make you lose your sense of smell. <coughs> but here's some not normal smell changes. And this is some of the things that are much more severe. So you think, oh, well, I just can't smell anymore. It could be a sign of something else, like Alzheimer's, like diabetes, um, like you've been exposed to certain chemicals. Um, Korsakoff psychosis, it's a brain disease that causes dementia um, and some other symptoms. It's caused by a lack of thiamine. Um, it's something that we kind of see in people that were heavy drinkers. <coughs> Lewy body dementia, MS. Uh, Pick's disease, which is also another cause of dementia, Parkinson's, schizophrenia. So there are a lot of brain-related disorders linked to your sense of smell. So if you notice that you're not smelling, you, you need to t you know, see your doctor and find out why. Uh, I was going to ask you, you know, one of the things when the cold season coming about is Zycam, which we take when we feel like a cold is coming on. Can, can, is there a connection, and one of our big things advertises with zinc, is there a correlation between taking that particular uh, pill to, you know, shorten your, your cold duration with that zinc, or is that a good idea? Well, it, the research that I did uh, says zinc-containing nasal sprays were taken off the market in 2009. Um, because it was affecting people's sense oh, of smell. Oh, okay. So um, but zinc deficiency can also be linked to your sense of smell. So it's probably better just to take the tablets. Oh, okay, good, thank you. So what can you do about their changes in smell? Um, you want to see your ear, nose, and throat doctor. You want to make sure that you're having good hygiene, washing your hands to prevent colds and flus, getting your flu shot. <coughs> Stop smoking. Anybody that's a smoker knows that completely eliminates your sense of smell and taste. Um, you want to talk to your doctor or pharmacist uh, about meds that cause a, a loss of smell. Add extra herbs and spices. Use a gas detector with an audible alarm. So if you have a, a <coughs> loss of sense of smell and you can't smell gas, you know, natural gas has no odor, but they add odor to it so if there's a leak, people can detect it. So they make an audible alarm 
for those gas detectors. And then also uh, make sure that you're dating the food that you put in the fridge. And if it's more than three days, toss it out. I learned the hard way with some tuna fish one time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm a big proponent of three days, toss it out. So now we're going to go on to our sense of touch. <coughs> Sometimes our sense of touch becomes less sensitive. And there's a lot of reasons why. Um, our skin kind of takes a beating. It's the biggest organ in our body. It's also our first line of defense against everything. <coughs> Germs, the sun, banging into stuff. So it, it kind of gets worn out, you know. Um, and also, uh, age is, it affects the deeper dermis layer of the skin. So that's where it's kind of nice and elastic. <coughs> That part thins out, and that's why you see a lot of older people with very thin, papery skin. Um, because the elastin and the collagen is what makes it kind of nice and thick and fleshy. So these changes also cause the skin to become drier and thinner, less supple. And so you might have a reduced sensitivity to vibrations and touch, and also heat and cold. Um, and if your skin is thinner, you're going to feel cold overall, but your sense of touch and feeling hot and cold substances might be a little different. Um, and sometimes it's just a, a, a nerve system issue, like a neuropathy in your feet, it's nerve pain in your feet. Sometimes you just don't have um, as acute a sense of touch because you have disruptions in your nervous system. Um, so that can be a, a big risk. If you can't tell when something is hot or cold, and if you touch something that's hot, you can get a serious burn and cause an infection and not even feel how hot it is. Um, and also other things like pressure sores, skin ulcers, especially on your feet, heat stroke, burns, frostbite. Um, so, oh, no, but you're fine. So there are some <laughs> things that happen as just a normal course of aging. So what can you do? If you feel numbness, tingling, or loss of sensation, you definitely need to talk to your doctor. It could be a nervous system problem. It could be a sign of something worse. Um, if you have meds that cause a loss of sensation, medications do a lot of weird things. Um, you want to lower your water heater temperature to 120 so that you don't accidentally scald yourself. Um, and then, if you have a hard time determining temperature, look at the thermometer to determine how to dress. Wear layers, so that if you feel too hot, you can take it off. If you feel too cold, you can put it on. You wanna cover your exposed skin in the winter, because if your skin is thin and dry, and you don't have that fatty layer to keep it insulated, you're gonna be much more susceptible to frostbite. Um, and in the, in the summer, wear light layers, loose clothing. You also want to inspect your skin for injuries, especially on your feet. If you're diabetic, you've probably heard this before, check your feet. Because um, diabetes can cause neuropathy in your feet and reduce sensation. And you could have a sore on your foot and not even know. And then it could get really bad. It could even turn septic. Um, also, as we age, this is kind of a little perk, is that we sometimes have a reduced sensation of pain. Yay! Because everything hurts. <laughs> However, it can also be a double-edged sword. Um, and then you got to keep your downstairs area clean and dry. The thinning of the skin also occurs in that area, and it can be very fragile and older people are much more susceptible to urinary tract infections. That's one of the reasons why. So um, you might want to change to flushable wipes because it's easier on the skin to get clean and also to keep it dry. You want to um, take good care of your skin, lotions. You don't want to prevent the cracking of your hands and your feet because those little cracks can let in germs and let in infections. So I'm going to wrap things up. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. <clears throat> or if you are still a Magnolia's fan, an ounce of pretension is worth a pound of manure. 
<laughs> but, uh, but in this case, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure because you want to stay on top of things before they become a problem. And, you know, regular checkups, good nutrition, a little exercise, staying social, can mean the difference between aging well, staying independent, or becoming frail. Mm -hmm.